Hey everyone, welcome back to another episode of Built In Race. Today I'm going to be tuning the Mazda. So, um, from race and race week and doing all that, I realized that injector had an issue, so I really couldn't tune on it, mess with it much. I played with a little bit of the transmission tuning to fix the problem where it wants to hit like the rev limiter at shift. I fixed that on the one two shift, and now I need to figure it out on three four shift. So, I've made a little bit of progress on the tune. But I uh, haven't done a lot, um, played with a little bit here and there, but now that the injector's fixed, everything should be good, so then I'm not offsetting a bank because it's super fat over there. Um, so I am going to be using my tuning school books. I have not been paid for or sponsored by or anything. The tuning school actually paid for a class um, for the Gen 3 and 4 stuff and went out, took it understood kind of their way of teaching, um, really helped me learn Gen 3 and 4 LS tuning. So I have purchased the Gen 5 books um, and all their cheat sheets and everything that helps you go through the process of tuning it. Um, I will not be going step by step through it because, well, that's what they make their money on. That's how they do it. And it's a lot of steps. So um, I'll give you guys a basic idea of how I go through and tune this thing. Um, but a lot of it's me following through and figuring out exactly what the book tells me to do. Um, which also, whenever I'm tuning some other people's cars and everything else, I can follow that same pattern and make sure each car gets tuned relatively the same, um, depending on mods and all of that. But they do have different things like bolt-ons, um, then I have some cheat sheets for heads cam and also forced induction. So today I'm just going to be going through trying to do just a normal tune on Clyde. Um, stock engine, but it does have an intake, different exhaust, stuff like that. So hopefully I can just get it dialed in well and then make sure just everything's running the way that it should be. So here's my tuning laptop. I'm going to go ahead and open up VCM editor. And a simple thing that you pretty much do every time is you go to file, open a fresh file, and then it'll let you read the vehicle. And I'm going to go ahead and do a read. Um, and then this way, interface not found, my cable has been fighting me here, so I will mess with that and get it to read. So this is a MVPI-1 Pro, which allows you to input an O2 sensor, which is highly critical when tuning um, wide open throttle on a GM vehicle. So I have an O2 sensor that later on I will be plugging into here, and then it just plugs in the computer. You download HP tuners from their website, and then you can come in and read the stock file which is what you want to do and then see so it initializes and it's going to read the ECM and then the TCM and then with the ignition on with the ignition on it's going to read the ECM and then the TCM so once I have this read I'm going to go ahead and file save as a base file so then I always have my regular file to go back to I have the original file that's been in the car I do have the original file that is in the car, um, but I'm going to start with this since I know that the transmission stuff I've already made a little bit of progress on. Um, so then I have all those settings saved as well as like the rev limiter was already was in there as well. Um, so some of that stuff's already been removed or adjusted. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and use the file, my current file that I know the car's been 1290s up here in Pueblo. Um, 13.1 at Vandermeer and all that. So that's where I'm going to start. Today. So the first step is going to be to do the part throttle tuning. So the way you do this is you disable um, the virtual VE and then you just put it in a mass airflow. So you're just calibrating the mass airflow. And you do the same with VE. A lot of the newer cars, they have a very complex VE. So a lot of it's just done under mass airflow. So what you do is you can kind of pull open the book and it shows you exactly where to go. And on this, it'll say, for instance, to go to airflow, dynamic, and then adjust the high RPM, um, high RPM disable and re-enable. You lower these two numbers, then that forces it into a mass airflow only mode. So then you'll end up setting up the tables the way that uh, that shows you and everything else. The tuning school actually sends you a USB or you can download it off their website, the um, downloadable files for the scanners to be able to do like all the scanning, um, which is kind of like a data log. And then it gives you the data to transfer over into the tune itself, which is really cool. Um, like I said, lots of little steps, a lot of little things that you don't want to miss. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and go through all those little settings, make sure I'm good on everything. And then probably go for a little drive and do some logging to see how far off it is. So now that I've wrote the tune into the car for mass airflow only, I'm going to go ahead and open up my scanner, get my Gen 5 channels set up. 
so I can open channel config, come to Gen 5 channels, this is all from the tuning school, otherwise you can kind of set up your own or do a read and then just manually go through here and place which ones you want. So I go ahead and have that, and then you got to set up your um, graphs over here, like a long term versus short term fuel trim, um, and then you got to go into it and make sure the graph layouts are the same, like all the um hertz and everything match up with the mass airflow that's actually in the car so when it's logging it's logging the correct values not values of a different type of mass airflow like a gen 3 or 4 or whatever it is all right so now that i have set the computer up the scanner's running everything's good everything checks out i'm going to go ahead and start the car start recording let the car warm up do its thing and then go take it for a drive and do some logs and see how far off the fueling is <laughs> It'll have speed injector duty cycle everything. Um, it also has all of the some of the calculations and everything there. I'm gonna go ahead and come up to like uh, diagnostics and also just make sure that it doesn't have any leftover uh, trouble codes, which I just wrote the computer, so it doesn't have any. It's looking okay there. So it doesn't have any codes, no DTCs detected. Um, which once you write the computer it will clear them so if it had something new it would pop up Now it's starting to go ahead and check see it so it's saying it's uh, needing to pull 2% fuel And then as, as you rev it up, it'll move through the band of the Hertz and Start taking data and adding it all up So it's a pretty cool deal uh, You're not shooting in the dark you're actually getting good data and then you can take this later on and transfer it into the main tune and adjust the mass airflow. So I'm gonna go ahead and let it warm up a little bit more and then take it for a little drive. Something super interesting with this car is actually the upper cross belt here hooks into the bottom. And you can adjust it that way. It's kind of crazy, it doesn't like pull out or anything. They're all just set, kind of like almost a harness would be in a race car. So I'm going to uh, get ready to go. Looks like we're getting some data. It's wanting to pull about 4%, 3.8. That's good. At least I know everything's working here. Go for a little drive. Get everything dialed in. Adjust it. And move on to some uh, full throttle tuning. Once part throttle is all done, we turn the mass airflow, or the VE and the mass airflow back on and do some adjusting that way. See how the tune looks. I kind of just guessed um, when I knew it was super fat. I just pulled like 20% fuel out of the whole car. Um, it finally ran okay at that point, so I just kind of ran it that way the whole week. Uh, it's been pretty, pretty terrible tune probably for what it should have been. So I'm just gonna do some drive and bearing throttle, work its way up through the RPM range. Uh, I definitely don't want to do any sort of wide open throttle now, uh, being in what uh, mass airflow only mode. Because if you, uh, what they have is called power enrichment, and then once you roll into full throttle, it starts to adjust differently. Um, it uses a whole separate table for the air fuel it's trying to target and everything, which we'll get into later. Normal GM type vehicle, you'd be 
six, five percent. It's like says it's good, it's at zero. And then After driving it again you can see like everything's within like one percent through here one little spot at three percent three three and a half percent so everything looks really really good up through here um, does need some more adjustment though down here at idle uh, just like nine percent see how it wants to like pull two add eight subtract nine subtract five then add two so this kind of area is a little weird um, probably gonna pick a number in between smooth it and then re-log and try to get a uh, a more for sure number because that, that area is not exactly happy right there but as far as anything up in the mid like 4,000 rpm range um and down everything to about probably 20 some hundred rpm looks super good within one to three percent so that's awesome all right adjustments have been made gonna go ahead and drive it around again same thing as before bearing throttle getting data come back adjust and once it's within a few percent um everything looks pretty good I'll, I'll go ahead and move on but the thing with it is is not always you get some of those outliers and you transfer them so then you get some areas that need to be adjusted that didn't need to be before and all that and then you can go in and smooth it um, you just try to use your best judgment and make sure everything is as close as it can be um, but at some point you'll get to where it just it'll add and then you'll go log again and it'll subtract so you just want to get to where it is real consistent and then the computer will always still do the same thing of trying to match what you want as far as the uh, fuel trims and all of that, but it definitely does need to be a lot closer um, once you've done a bunch of modifications stuff. This one's a little bit off because the intake's completely different from what it was as far as like a little snorkel, um, but the, the engine otherwise is 100% the same. So really it, it shouldn't be way off. Um, but I did use the sock tune from PSI. I think with that and the mass airflow, I had to add a bunch of fuel to it. It was it was a ways off. So now I'm getting it dialed in to fit the car. I can already tell just kind of cleaning some of that stuff up and getting that cylinder to not be just running super fast that the car is just super crisp right now. It's just running so much better. I don't know if that'll necessarily turn into a lot faster time, but just it feels so much more responsive. So it is wicked hot today. Uh, took a little break, went inside, let it cool down. It is still plenty hot, but uh, just ran through the whole book, all the settings and everything to set it up for wide open throttle. Um, all the part throttle looked pretty good. 
I also looked at a 6L80E tuning book that I have and the car, um, there is a torque reduction if you're on the brake pedal and throttle at the same time. So like when we're in stage in the car. So I went ahead and maxed those settings out. Um, so I'm curious to see if that helps the car launch. Also, um, I thought that the computer was already preset for wheel and tire, which was a simple check. I thought I did, but which the mile an hour wasn't very far off on the gauge. But uh, I went ahead and set that, which you can tell it to automatically adjust like the transmission parameters uh, and shift to points. So that might be some of why it was hitting that rev limiter too. Uh, going back to just hurry and getting the car done and getting on the road with it. Um, a lot of little things that maybe could make a huge difference here. So went ahead and adjusted some of that. So changed the transmission around, set up my air fuel. I'm going to target it right around 13.0 at the end of the pipe. Um, which I need to get my wideband and stuff set up. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now as soon as I write the tune in and then get the wideband all set up and then it can input the O2, um, the air fuel ratio into the computer since uh, GM uses narrow band O2 sensors from the factory. You have to use an external wideband to actually set up and adjust the wideband O2 uh, to give your air fuel ratio. So I'm gonna get that set up, mounted in the pipe, ran inside and then that is where it ties in to the HP tuners here. Um, and then go do some driving, same thing, uh, set up the scanner to log differences between target air fuel and actual air fuel. It'll give you a percentage, then you transfer that onto the mass airflow um, curve and then go from there. So here's a quick little tip, when you're tuning, you can just do right calibration to just ECM, but I'm also doing transmission, otherwise you could do do not write. So then you're not waiting for it to rewrite the transmission every time, it helps speed up the process a little bit. All right, so got my wideband in here. It's an Innovate LM2. So here's the wideband little sensor. It goes up in the exhaust pipe. And then the wire comes out, runs up the car, into the car, comes over, goes into the LM2. This is the main unit for the LM2. Uh, out of the LM2, I have my power. You can run this off of like a 12 volt on the car. Um, cigarette lighter works the best and then I bought this little mount to mount it so that I can keep an eye on air fuel while driving and then out of the LM2 comes over to this output right here and then it's a 5 volt output which logs into HP tuners and then gets added into the scanner on the system so pretty sweet little setup uh, a lot of new some newer cars are coming out with wideband so it's pretty nice because you get away from this things like the Camaro that's all it uses is a wideband so it's already built into like the holly that's a nice feature on it but this works so comes up goes in gives me a wideband reading so then i will log wideband versus what the computer says it should have compared to what it is actually giving me Hopefully you can see at like 5400 rpm it went 11.3 air to fuel um 12 -0, and then it, it's pretty lean as on tip in and then it clears up and then it pretty much runs like through the 11s until i lift um and then it goes lean on the shift point What's weird is it actually shuts the throttle blade at the shift point, and I don't want it to do that, so i got to figure out what's causing that. Because um, it doesn't do it anywhere else. So maybe that's some of the torque limit um, in the Gen 5 stuff, but something definitely kind of weird right there that it, on that shift point it, it pulled 
it shut the throttle blade and then it doesn't look like it did it anywhere else so that's good but yeah so uh 84 percent tps um and i don't think it goes into the target air fuel until it hits like 89 percent tps so i'll probably change that in the tune um and then here it goes it went 13.0 was commanded air fuel. So actually it was it was um, commanding the correct air fuel um, throughout the whole thing. 13.0, 13.0, 13.0, 13 So yep, I'm going to go ahead and change that around and figure out exactly what I got to do. But So it was super, super rich. So I got to pull a bunch of fuel out of it, which will help lean it out and should make a bunch more power. Something that I am seeing, though, that's pretty weird is throughout this whole thing is only giving it 13 and a half degrees of timing. Uh, and then in the tune, I have it, like, commanding, like, 17. So that seems awful weird. So uh, I need to figure out what's causing it to pull that extra amount of timing. There's probably a different table or something that's causing it to not give the commanded amount of timing. Turn after one adjustment. Um, it still wants to it goes super lean. So last night, towards the end of the night, I ended up finishing up, and I went and made one more final pull, and I'm noticing that everything seems to be decent, except for it's pulling timing on all the shift points, um, which then causes it to want to add a bunch of fuel, because it thinks that it's um, going, like in that part, super rich, um, because it's cutting all the timing, which is leaving f unburnt fuel, and then it cleans up, and it's not too bad. Within a couple percent, I went ahead and cleaned this up a little bit more. So after making that final pull, I found out there is a minimum timing table. Uh, I went ahead and adjusted that to like three degrees instead of right here. It's pulling the car all the way down to like minus 10 degrees of timing in the shifts, which that's designed to like help the transmission live, longevity, all that. I'm trying to go as fast as I can with the car, um, kind of race car-ish, so not too worried about like longevity of it. And it's also in a vehicle that weighs half the weight that the transmission would normally be in. So... I'm um, going to play, keep playing with it. I'm going to probably play with it at LS Fest, but for right now, I think it's good enough. Um, the top side air fuel is pretty decent. I'm uh, going to keep an eye on it and play with it, but I think that it's throwing some of my readings off because it cuts the timing, loads up on fuel, and then thinks that it's got a bunch of extra fuel in it. So uh, I'm just trying to look in the areas that I know the car's running good without getting um, any of that kind of feedback. So I'm going to go ahead and write this final tune into the car take it down to Bowling Green, and we'll see how it does. So that'll be it for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed some tuning. Planning on getting into a whole lot more in-depth tuning stuff. Um, again, I'm just trying to learn it, so trying to share with you guys some of the little things that I learned along the way. But I appreciate everybody for watching. If you would, please hit that subscribe button, and we'll see you in the next video.